Brian here. I think I've been driving electric cars wrong. So on an electric car, there is something called regenerative braking. So what happens is basically, if you're in an electric car, you have this regen regenerative, okay? Find it hard to pronounce that. So I'm gonna call it regen braking, okay? So there's regen braking, and basically when you are driving a car, you put your foot on the accelerator, the battery will send power to a motor, which will drive the wheels, and that drives you, you know, forwards or backwards, whatever direction you want to go. If you let off the accelerator, what'll happen is the motor starts turning the opposite direction. And when it's turning the opposite direction, it's trying to harvest energy from the wheels to put it back up into the high voltage battery, which is obviously where the power comes from for the car. Fine. Um, I normally, when I get into one of these cars, what I do is I reduce the level of regen braking, okay? So we need to go for drive to show you how this works. So you see these paddles here? See the way in the dash over there, they're changing. So up and down through the various levels, right? So if you look along here, I have no regenerative braking. I can have level one, which is some, I can have a medium mount, which is number two, or I can have a lot, which is number three. So all I'm doing is just touching those paddles. Fine, so as you can imagine, obviously, if I have level one, there's a certain amount of have level two, there's even more regen braking. If I have level three, there's even more regen braking. Um, I hate the sensation. So what it's like basically is, when you let off the pedal, you'll feel the car kind of slow down, um, but, um, I don't enjoy it, so I normally completely disable it. And all the reading and all the people that are really know a lot about electric cars are saying, no, that is not the way to do it. You're better off using the regen braking. So just to see if it's actually more effective, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive the car and on corners, you're gonna have a trip menu over here. So I'm going to go into this second one here and I'm gonna scroll downwards. So you've got something basically called uh, drive information. So it's gonna tell us in terms of kilowatts per 100 kilometers uh, over here. It'll tell you what our consumption is. So I'm gonna drive home tonight. Mm, go and drive it with it on tonight. I'm gonna to stick it on level three. So I'm gonna leave it all the way home on level three. And then tomorrow I'm gonna to drive uh, the same journey again, the opposite direction uh, with it completely off just to see if there's much of a difference in the drive information between having it on or off. With regen braking, so say for example when you're driving along, what I used to find and still do find, you let off the pedal, the car slows down very quickly. You can feel a resistance, it is like having a brake pedal on and I suppose essentially that's what it's doing, it's trying to harvest energy from the turning wheels. Now it's really handy when you come up to a junction, see here on the paddle if I hold that, so I don't even have to use the brake pedal, I can just hold that and actually that will stop the car. I can use that as the brake um, instead of my foot brake. Now because you're not using those hydraulic brakes around your foot, obviously you won't use as much brake pads as you normally would. So it's got a really, really big advantage there. But I just always felt like I was constantly fighting the car. So every time you let off the pedal, yes, it's slowing down. It is saving on brake pads and stuff, but I just felt like I had to floor the car more often than I would on a car that would essentially freewheel. The drive home I do every evening has some motorway. It's got some 100 kilometer an hour. It's got some back road slow driving. It's got some town driving. It's actually very, very varied. So it'll give you a really good, you know, average kind of usage of how much electricity an electric car uses. Okay, so that journey's finished. Uh, so that was regen on, 74 kilometer journey, 13.5 kilowatt hour consumption, just over an hour of a journey. So I reckon, yeah, that actually looks better than what I'd normally get. Okay, the return trip. So we're going to undo that level of regen. But this is why I normally drive, like there's literally no regen. So in my primitive mind, I'm thinking, right, I don't have to fight the, the kind of slowing up. I can just freewheel. I take my foot off the pedal and you can see here, momentum continues to carry me. I'm not putting my foot on the pedal. In my head, in a normal conventional fueled car, this would be an efficient way to drive. So it is the complete opposite of what regenerative braking is. I'm trying to freewheel as much as possible. For anyone that's unfamiliar with the measurement I'm using, so we're, uh, if we look at the car when we drove it last night, it told me that every 100 kilometers on average, we'd be consuming 13.5 kilowatts of electricity. In other words, that's kilowatts per 100 kilometers. Similarly, in a conventionally fueled petrol or diesel car, you'll get something of liters per 100 kilometers. So that's, in other words, how many liters of fuel you're using every 100 kilometers. The end of this journey, so, what have we got? Uh, similar again, about 73 kilometers covered, a little over an hour of a journey, 15.4 kilowatt hours. So to remind ourselves, last night's journey, last night's journey even, uh, was 13.5. Um, so technically, yes, it actually has made a difference. So in a percentage kind of term, uh, you're probably talking about, what's that, about 12 or 13% of a difference. And I had that on the max regen. So I guess like you do have to modify your driving style to use that regen braking because 
as I said, I feel like I'm fighting the car when it's always there. I feel like I have to use the accelerator pedal more. Um, but these manufacturers know what they're talking about, uh, so they wouldn't have it there if it wasn't beneficial. And I suppose I'm after doing the journey and it does make a difference. So um, in terms of like uh, electricity saving or whatever, um, like to be able to save, oops, to be able to save 10% or over 10%, like it is a significant amount. Um, anyway, hopefully that is useful for anyone that's curious about regenerative braking. It's something I never did before and it's something I didn't drive with regen braking enough and probably going forward I better start. Anyway, hopefully the video is useful. Thanks for watching.